this this video is entitled the glory of Gaben is dedicated to honoring the memory of uh, the queen of Gaben or queen mother of Gaben known as Nana Akosia Afrakuma the second we begin with a salutation, with a salutation from the state homes of Gabin, known as Gabin in Tahra. Nana Akosia Afrakuma the second shown here seated was a Gabinhima or Queen of Gabin in the late eighteen sixties, eighteen seventies. She was born to her mother was known as Nana Equia Sapoma, who was the reigning Gabin Hema, Queen of Gabin, and also concurrently King of Gabin, for she occupied the male stool as well. Nana Kosia Fakuma, the second's father, was Nana Asafo Eji, the first, the Gabin Hene, or King of Gabin. She was the first of three sisters. Her other sister was Nana Equia Boatma Mansa. The other one, the third one, died. You see here once again, this is her seated in state. We thank the British for this picture of Nana Akosia Afrakuma the second. Here she is bedecked in gold jewelry. Nana Akosia Afrakuma's reign as the Queen of Gabin was characterized by two major events in the history of Gabin or three major events firstly the Sagrenti or Ganet Woosley War of which involved Asante and the British secondly the departure the second major movement or departure of the Gabins from Old Gabin in Ashanti to the Gold Coast colony. Firstly, they went to Cape Coast, then to Accra, and eventually they settled and founded the state of New Gabin with its capital, Koforidia. In the 1860s or early 1870s, Sir Garnet Woosley amassed a troop of British soldiers and Gold Coast Colony, other Akan and non Akan soldiers who proceeded to march to do battle with Asante 
on Asante soil. Under Sagan Woosley's command was one other British officer known as Glover. Glover. The Drabins were detailed to hold a position against the British. However, there were some disagreements amongst the Asantes, among the Asante chiefs and kings, the king of Gabin and Kumasi, and some of the Kumasi chiefs are about, about the best approach to adopt. Gabin, in the first exile, major exile from Asante, in the reign of Nana or the Gabin in Nana Akosi Boati in the 1830s, Sergeant or left and took stayed in Achim Ebrakwa. Over there, the Drabins concluded a pact of non aggression with Achim Ebrakwa. They swore on oath not to fight each other or indulge in the blood of one another. So, during the invasion of Asante by the forces of Sir Garnet Woosley in the war known as the Sagrenti War, Governor Glover's forces were to approach Asante from the east. These forces were to be met by the forces of the Gabinhine, or the King of Gabin. Information got to the Gabins. The Gabinhine and the Gabinhine now across Africa, Kuma, that included in uh, Glover's forces were some Achims from specifically from Achim Ebrakwa, some soldiers. So when this information got to them, Nana Akoshia Fakuma, it was her that was actually responsible for this invoked the oath that they had with Achim Ebrakwa and she ordered the Gabin forces not to fight with Glover's forces. In actual fact, both sides, the Achim Ebrakwa soldiers who were in Glover's column, withdrew from battle and so too the Degrabin forces they withdrew from battle after after some initial skirmishes in the Praso Praso area. Konongo going to Praso, present day Praso area. So Glover's forces or Garnet Woosley's forces had an easy match to Asante and were able to enter the capital of Asante, which is Kumasi, and the rest is history. Others were saying it was a kind of payback time for Jabin, owing to the actions of uh, Oseya or Akutu, that Asante Hine that had uh, indulged illegally in the blood of the Jabins. Following this battle, there were disagreements in Asante. The Asante Hine Kufi Karikari was disposed, but Jabin was not consulted about this disposition, as Kumasi or the Asantes were bound to do by the Asante constitution and laws. Men Sambonsu was ensued as Asante Hene. Again, Jabin was not consulted in contravention of the Asante laid down Asante law. For Jabin has to be consulted whenever any of the Oyoko's tools were to be occupied or filled. That, that is one of the cardinal rights of Jabin. So, in Men Sambonsu's time, war again ensued between 
Gabin and Kumasi, there was a disagreement. After a gallant fight, uh, Gabin's running out of ammunition left Asante for the Gold Coast colony. Again, for Achim Ebraka. First of all, they went to Cape Coast and then to Accra and finally bought land and settled in Achim Ebraka. Here we have an account from the British, specifically from Captain Ellis. It says, the Drabenhima, that is Nanakusha Fakuma II, shown here once more, with his with her father, Nana Asafuji the first, the Drabenhine, and the Drabins arrived in Cape Coast on 1st February 1876. They arrived in Cape Coast on 1st February 1876 to meet Governor Stra Strahan. According to Captain A.B. Ellis, who saw the visitors, the Gabenhima Afakuma II made the greatest impression on the visitors, on the spectators, sorry. The wealth, he goes on to say, the wealth of young handsome queen mother was worthy of note. She was attired in a rich silk country cloth, obviously kinte, known as kinte, of great value, and her arms were covered. Shown here, her arms were covered and her arms from the wrist to the elbow. Were covered with strings of gold ornaments and agribeads. Gold anklets appeared on each leg, and her well shaped neck was almost hidden. That is her once again. And her well shaped neck was almost hidden by the mass of gold necklets which encircled it. Twelve or fourteen young girls, likewise bedecked with gold ornaments, attended her, bearing horse tails with which to whisk away the impertinent flies. This was a description of the Jabin in 1876, who made a grand appearance in Cape Coast with her father, the Jabin Hime, Nanasa Fuji, the first. The Jabin Hima, Nana Akosha Fakuma, the second, um, stayed in Accra with the other Jabins. It is one of the noteworthy as two of hers was that uh, she fell out with her father, the Jabinine Nana Asafuji the first. So she revealed to the British. Nana Asafo Ejei's plan to retake back his lands in Asante by force. Nana Asafo Ejei, together with King Takiteria and some other chiefs 
or kings of the colony, had rearmed and stashed um, armaments and munitions at certain strat strategic points areas in Achim. Following this revelation or betrayal of the Jabinhine by Nana Akosha from Command II, the British seized those stockades and Nana Asafoje's plan could not come to fruition. Nana Asafoje was quite a brave warrior. Earlier, Jabin had lost that war owing to running out of ammunition. So that must have taught him a, them a valuable lesson. The land, and this is very important, the land of New Jabin, that was a bought from Achim Ebriaka by the British on behalf of uh, by of the Jabins. The Jabins pay for it. The freehold of it was bought in the name of Nana Akosia Afakoma the second. Her daughter, either biological or classifactory, Nana Amasewa the first, who also later on, later on became a Jabenhima, and the entire entire Jabin royal family. That was how the land of New Jabin was acquired. So New Jabin is owned by the Jabins from all Jabin, all the Jabins are one. But sometimes, some people who do not know the history want to create a division. New Jabins actually owned by the Jabins, by the old Jabins. The Jabins are all one. And it was bought again in the names mentioned. So, Nana, Akosha Fakoma, unfortunately, passed away in Accra. However, she was buried later on in Gabin, Asante. She did great for Gabin. So, we remember her. This is her seated with some members of her cult, some of her courtiers. It, she is not, it's not Ya Asantua as is depicted here. That is wrong. It is Nana. This is not Ya Asantua. This is shown in, the, in this picture. It's Nana Akosia Afrakoma the second of Gabin. The Gabin Queen or Queen Mother, known in Chi or Akan as Gabin Hima. Thank you.